Okay, so the Python data model. We've already seen in last week's lecture, we've already seen that there are these math operators which work as expected on numbers. I can write a plus b, and if both are integers, it's just going to add them. But we've also seen that these operators are also defined for strings, and they actually have a different behavior for strings, because if I call string plus string, it concatenates them instead of trying to add like the individual letters or something. So now you may wonder, how does Python know which one of these it's supposed to use? And also, if I make my own classes, like if I make, for example, um, a vector class, can I define the add operator, the plus operator, such that I can simply add two operators for me? And yes, I can actually do this, because under the hood, if I call operators, like the plus operator, this is actually just syntactic sugar for a method call. So if Python knows this here is an integer and I call the plus operator on it, then Python will simply call a method on the in class, which is corresponds to the respective sign here. And there are methods defined for the plus, for the minus, and for all the operators which there are. This is a nice feature that Python shares with, for example, C++, but not with Java. In Java, you cannot operate the, uh, override these operators. So as an example, if I, for example, define here a list and then call the function len of my list, which returns the length of this list, what Python actually makes of this is it calls this dunder method len, so that's a so-called dunder method or magic method, um, instead of this. So you have to, so calling len and then an object is the same as calling the method, so methods you see with the dot, um, you have to recognize with the dot, it calls the method of the respective object. So basically, under the hood of Python, you can imagine there's a definition of this length function, which takes an object and simply returns this method of the object. And if you know the, the methods that are implicitly called by the common syntax, you can design objects that beautifully integrate with the language. And for example, you can make your own vector class and define this dunder method length, such you can call len from your object just as much as you can do for lists, or you can also define the plus and the minus. You can also make, for example, your object an iterator such that you can loop over it with a for loop or you can check for the truthiness of this object, which we also had in last week's example, and so on and so on. So another example, if you call three plus three, this is in fact the same as if you would call on this object three, because you know everything in Python is an object and there are no primitives. So the int object here has a method, a dunder method called add. And if I call three plus three, I'm calling this three with another three. And we see here, if we execute this, this returns the very same thing as if we called the syntactic sugar for this. So syntactic sugar just means writing something prettier. OK, so if we want to do this ourselves, so we last week we learned about objects. So if we want to do this ourselves and make op want to make objects that behave nicely with the rest of the language, um, let's, for example, we don't want to make a vector but a triple. A triple here is representing by three numbers. So how would we do this? We would create a class triple, and every class needs an init function, and this is for the actual um, instances of the object. It's, so it's an instance function. This is why we need the self. And we need three numbers in the constructor, and these are then the nums. All right, so if I call triple with one, two, three, I'm creating an object of an instance of my object triple. So this doesn't look too pretty if I just create it. So this is what it returns. So if I use the uh, co the semicolon after it, it won't, Jupyter won't return what this does. But if we print or return um, what this, what the creation of my triple is, we see that this is how a triple looks like. So it says it's a main dot triple object at some random address in my RAM. So this string representation of our class is not really informative. I would rather like it to have a string. So if I print it, it's the same thing. So if I rather want to have it a string representation, which is actually useful. So for example, triple containing one, two, three, if I want this to be the string representation of it, I can implement the web rule, the representation, I think, dunder method. OK, and to do this, I simply define in my class triple this dunder method web rule, 
never forget the um, <laughs> the doc uh, the doc string, and then I can this function here returns the string triple and then the numbers. And if I then create a new triple using my constructor here, I'm going to see that it returns something nice. And if I change the representation function, so for example, I want to return triple object, object. If I create it and then let it represent itself, it's going to show triple object. All right. And then we already see that addition for integers is possible. And we want to add our triplets just as much as we want, um, as we're able to add integers. So for this, we have to implement the add function, uh, the add method, the dunder method add, to be precise. So we want element-wise addition between the three numbers. So what we do here, we define this dunder method add, and we simply return a new triple where every of the individual numbers, every, every of the elements is added. If I now create two triplets, A and B, we see this doesn't return anything. So if I, if I printed B, it would print my new nice string representation. I wrote it here. That's why it says triple again. And now that we implemented our dunder method add, we can add triplets together. So we can go for A plus B. So one triple plus the other triple. This, like I told you, is syntactic sugar is calling the dunder method add on um, our first triple and then get giving it as first argument b. And actually this again is even syntactic sugar and this explains why you always need this self as the first argument in instance functions. So if you want to call a function on an integer but Python uh, on an integer on an instance of an object, but Python internally does is it calls this function on the object class, and as first argument, it provides the memory address, so the reference to that instance of the object. So a dot dunder add b is the same. So Python internally converts this to calling this dunder method add on the class that a is, and then providing as first argument this a. And now you see why this add function is defined like this. And as a matter of fact, by every function and uh, every method, sorry, I mean method, by every method of an object that works on the instance needs as first argument the self because Python internally converts every method call to calling this from the class itself and providing the actual instance of the object as first argument. And this is then called self. So if we call a plus b, we're going to call this method and provide here a and here b. So I get the first num from a and I get the first num from b. I add them and I return a new triple that contains this and the second and the third. So if we call a plus b or a dot add b or triple dot add a b, this all returns a new triple which has three, five, seven. All right. All right, but so far we only implemented addition between triplets and triplets. So if we, for example, try to call a plus one, it would try to, so this other here would be one of type int and it would try to get this other dot nums one and an int, um, an int object doesn't have this attribute nums. So what we would have to do for this is we would have to, for, we would have to in our method here, add if the other is actually an instance of the object triple, the type triple, and then we can do this. And if not, we could, for example, return not implemented. And now if we want to add a plus one, it would um, tell us that it's not implemented instead of the other error. All right, so we could also, for example, do our behavior. So we could return a new triple, and that is then self.nums0 plus and then other self.nums1 plus other self.nums2 plus other. Now if we say a plus 1, it returns a new triple, 2, 3, 4. Okay, but uh, what if we want to do it the other way around? What if we want to enable addition between these triples and scalar values the other way around? This is not possible because 1 plus 
So if we call one plus the triple, this is interpreted as this int dot add, and then its first argument this one, and the second argument our triple. And this, as we see, is not not implemented, so it returns the special value not implemented, as I did here in the previous example. Okay? Why is that so? Well, because when Python was developed and the dunder method add for string for integers was done, um, they didn't think that you could a second argument add a triple there. And they didn't think of this case and didn't check for this case. So actually, we have to to correct it like the correct way is like this, is instance, instance, other int else return not implemented. Okay, so it's implemented here, the addition for integers is implemented between ints and ints. And it's not implemented between ints and triples. All right, but we can add this behavior without um, trying to change the uh, how integers work in Python. And that is, if the binary operation doesn't work on the first operand, Python tries to invert the order of the operands and then calls white add on the other. Okay, and only if this also doesn't work because it's not implemented, this type error is added. So we can implement this white add to make scalar addition work without changing the behavior at the end. So in this case, so if now, well, how actually this standard, um, how actually this plus operator works is that obviously, so what we see here that Python tries to call this int.add one and triple, and if that returns not implemented, then it calls triple.rAdd int. So now if we add this rAdd function, we can call one plus this triple. And actually let's make this here better because this is our better add function here. And now we can call one plus triple and also triple one, five, seven plus int. And this also works. Right, now I got an exercise for you. And that is make the in operator work for our triples. And the corresponding dunder method, which is called for the in operator, is this dunder method contains. So if we want to check if three in and a triple, this should return true after defining our dunder method contains this. Right, so now I hope this worked for you. I'm going to review the solution here. So I have a smaller presentation here, but the Dunder method contains simply takes itself and the item which we're checking and can simply forward that because nums here is um, a tuple. You can define tuples without the parentheses. And the in operator is defined for tuples, so we can simply return one in self.nums. And after we defined that, this is true for three, um, but not true for four because four is not in the nums. Okay, if you want to know more about the data model, this here is a nice link. And it also lists further down, oops, it lists further down all of the um, Dunder methods which, which exists, including um, more. So this is, for example, the operators. This is less or equal, this is equal, uh, this is less than, not equal. These are all these operators, binary operators, for example. And, a bunch more, there are really many. So the repo we already saw, how to convert something to a string, which is internally called if you print it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so this is nice if you want to add your own classes. Okay, and then one thing I want to show you is truth value testing. We've already seen this in last week's lecture. Any object can be tested for its truth value, for its truthiness, for use in an if or why condition. Okay, and if we go to this link, um, and we look for the method bool, bool, this is what we see. So what the dunder method bool for normal object does, for, for most object does, it, well, it should return true or false. And if the method itself is not defined, so if you make your own object and you want to be able to ask if triple, so for example, for my triple here, I could define this def bool self items and I could for example return uh, false if uh, no return true if any of the numbers is true 
So basically this is the same as simply returning if any of the numbers here is not zero. Because for all of these numbers, they're going to return true if they're not zero, um, or rather the any operator, because this also has this boolean method implemented. And now if, so now only the triple zero, zero, zero would be false, okay? But if, for example, this bool operator is not implemented, what instead Python, for example, does, it, it calls this len, and if this is not defined, um, it, an object is considered true if it's non-zero. Okay, so this fine truthiness would be internally defined in Python like this. So if the var.bool method is implemented, so if the bool dunda method of this object is implemented, then it returns this. If it's not implemented, yeah, this is, what is this? This is a perfect example of Python's it's easier to ask for forgiveness than for, than for permission. We simply try to execute the bool method. And if it doesn't exist, we just catch the error and continue. And then it checks if its length is not equal to zero. And if it neither defines len or bool, then all instances are considered true. And if this is also not defined, then it returns true. And thus this, um, oops, this fine truthiness function, which we just made, um, have the same behavior as Python's original um, truthiness check function, which is, for example, what's internally called if you call if or while. And apparently, yes, it does. So an empty string is false, a non-empty string is true, an empty list is false, a non-empty list is true, and a zero is false, and a one is true. So this seems to work. Nice. All right, and here are again the names of the special methods.